Hello class, welcome to the final segment in lecture 27, and in this final segment we're going to take a look at how you can diagnose omega, that is the vertical velocity and pressure coordinates on a sounding, uh, or yeah, just a sounding. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Now one thing that we do have to mention right away is that you will not see this plotted on an observed sounding, and the reason why is because it is currently impossible for radio sons, which is uh, the instrumentation of weather balloons is currently impossible for those instruments to directly observe vertical motions in the atmosphere. So you're not going to see vertical motion of any kind plotted on an observed sounding that is as of me recording this as as of me recording this segment of this lecture. Uh, in the future maybe the technology will emerge where you can uh, diagnose what vertical motions are present in the atmosphere, but the main issue with that is the weather balloons themselves are also rising, so it's really hard for them to tell if there is in fact rising motion or sinking motion in the atmosphere. So as it stands right now, as it stands of me recording this particular video, uh, it is impossible for balloon, weather balloons or radiosons to directly observe vertical velocity in the atmosphere, hence what I'm about to show you is not going to show up on an observed sounding. However, what I'm about to show you will show up on a uh, forecast sounding, and that's because uh, when you take a look at a forecast sounding, you're taking a look at what a numerical model uh, is estimating to be the state of the atmosphere at a specific point in time and space. And as it turns out, part of that estimate involves uh, getting a rough, uh, calculating what the expected vertical velocity will be at every point in space and at a specific point in time. And if you know what the vertical velocities are at specific points in space, then you can theoretically plot what those vertical velocities, that is those values of omega, are at various levels in the atmosphere. Or what they are expected to be. But that's the main thing that we're going to be looking at, and that's something important that we have to keep in mind. You can only look at this on a forecast sounding. At the moment, there is no way to get this information from an observed sounding. But numerical models, since they, a part of their algorithms is to estimate what the vertical velocities are at uh, every point on the every grid point, then that would then allow us to uh, plot what the model is estimating the vertical velocity to be at every point in space. If we were to, say, uh, query a sounding at a specific point in space, and we could see what the vertical motions look like at that specific point in space. So let's actually take a look at an example of such a sounding. So uh, if you're curious about what exactly this is sampled, uh, this is from March 19th, 2018, which was a tornado event uh, in northern Alabama. And this is, in fact, a sounding that I queried for fun, which this sounding was sampled right in the middle of a tornadic supercell. So that's why, uh, that's why things might look a little uh, different here. And you can see uh, over on the left-hand side of the sounding, you can see this uh, purple bar or this purple line. And you can see at the top of that, it says omega, and that is in fact the plot for the vertical velocity at every point in the at every grid point in the vertical direction or in the in the vertical. And as it turns out, in this specific uh, program, uh, which is called Sharpie or Sharpi, depending on your preference for pronunciation, if you take a look at the if you take a look at down here, you can see you have a bunch of red lines here. And it turns out that by convention, if you have red lines of omega, you can see it goes from left to right on the screen. It goes from the purple line uh, from that point to the right, from the purple line to the right. That is, in fact, representing an area where you have rising motion or where the values of omega are negative. And it also turns out that the longer the red bar, then the more significant the vertical motions are. And of course, this was sampled right in the middle of a supercell, so of course the vertical motions are going to be quite strong. And you can see uh, they're pretty strong. They're pretty strong in the uh, between about 850 and 500 millibars. That's where the strongest vertical motions appear to be. And if you've got any sinking motion present in the atmosphere, then that will be plotted as a blue line, and that will be plotted as going from the purple bar to the left. So up here we have some weak sinking motion present, but it is being plotted here. This would indicate positive values of omega, which would indicate that we have sinking motion at these particular points in the vertical here. And this is from the high resolution rapid refresh model or the HER model. And one thing that I'll also go ahead and note from more of an operational standpoint is where if you're trying to make a forecast for severe weather, you don't want to be querying uh, you don't want to be querying points in space where there are already storms ongoing. In fact, 
uh, one common term that I've heard used for such soundings are contaminated soundings because you're not sampling what the environment is before the storms go up, what sort of environment the storms have to interact with. You're sampling the environment within the storms themselves, and that's not going to give you an accurate representation of what actually is going on in the atmosphere. Ideally, what you want is you want to sample a point in the atmosphere or a point on a numerical model where there is no convection ongoing. You want to see what the environment is before any storms go up, and that will give you a better idea of how those storms are going to behave. And one dead giveaway that you're sampling uh, something that's in the middle of a storm is if you have ridiculously large values of omega here. If you see really big values of omega when you've got really strong rising motions, your sounding was probably taken in the middle of a storm or some sort of convection, which is not going to give you a very accurate representation of the atmosphere. If you want an accurate representation of what exactly is going on in the atmosphere, then you want, you want a sounding that's not going to have ridiculous values of omega like this. But that's going to do it for this final segment on pressure coordinates, uh, specifically more of an extension on the topic of omega that we covered in segment two. And so that is going to do it for lecture 27. So uh, that's also the last lecture of the semester. So uh, I would normally say I'll see you in the next lecture. But in this case, I'm just going to say uh, I hope you all enjoyed this class and I'll probably see you around. So uh, thank you all for watching and have a wonderful rest of your summer.